Namaste. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we'll be discussing a very common posture. It's a bridge in between a level one and level two practice. That's a crow. Let us talk about students those who do not feel it easy and what we can do in order to break through as per maybe fear, maybe strength. So when we are doing a crow, it's a combination of strength, partly flexibility. A lot also depends on how much willing we are towards taking the fear away because that can be the root of we not being able to get into the final posture because they do not feel that shifting point, that transit point where the weight needs to be transferred from the back of the palm towards the fingertips. One reason is that the fear of a face fall. And today we'll talk about what are the necessary steps, precautions and warm up we require in order to get to this posture. The idea of a plank is to try getting the wrist, core and shoulders to warm up. So let's get started. So set your palms as wide as your shoulder, stacking the shoulder and wrist in one line. Tuck the toes under and come into a plank. Now draw the tailbone down, hug the ribs in and protract the scapula. Hold this form for one minute. Now during this minute's hold, you want to start shifting the body weight forward. So observe how my shoulders are moving more towards the direction of my fingertips. That would help a faster warm up of the wrist joint. Also check that you're not retracted with the scapula, but you're pushing and puffing the chest up, creating space in between the shoulder blades. The tailbone is constantly tucked downwards into that posterior pelvic tilt, which helps engaging the core. We hold this for the last 15 seconds. Arms straight, strong legs, strong posterior tilt. Five. Arm straight, keep shifting, and relax. Uh, ideally, I would suggest if you are working with the fundamentals of a plank and a one minute plank, keeping the form right is not easy. Break it down to 30 seconds and do three sets instead. The second warm up would be quick uh, push ups. You can do a drop knee push up as well. So, push up prepares our tricep strength. As we are going into a drop knee push up, we want to keep a plank, put the knee down from here. Notice that your tailbone is not lifted up. You're shifting forward enough, keeping the tailbone down. So it's a straight line from the crown of my head back to my knees with the tailbone down. If you're over here, the effect and the benefits over the upper body would not be as significant. So keep the tailbone down, go all the way down full range and push back up holding your core. If you can do alternately full push up, you can do that too. Let's do a few more. And relax. The reason I am doing the drop knee push up is that in a crow we do not require as much strength as a full push up would do. The reason being if you observe the crow pose, for our angle of the arms, when we are going into a push-up, we are getting our upper arms almost parallel or more than that, and then we push back. But as I'm going into a crow, if you observe the angle of my upper arm, they are not parallel to the ground. So the bending of the arms would not be as deep as is required in a full push-up. Hence, the strength required for a full push-ups would be a lot more greater compared to just talking about the tricep strength as much we are using in a crow. So as long as you have a half push-up with the right form, that is fine. The next warm-up we'll be doing is just shifting the weight from the feet to the palm, getting a sense of the lightness around the toes and the palms carrying the weight. So I sit down in a squatting position I put the center of my tricep against the kneecap. Center of my tricep against the kneecap. I set my palms down around one to one and a half feet ahead of my toes. 
I keep my palms as wide as my shoulders. I keep my index fingers facing forward. And then I lean my body front, shifting front, and feel my toes getting light. And then I go back. That's one. Shift, palms heavy, toes light. Go back, toes heavy, palms light. Shift, palms heavy, toes light. Go back. A few more. Shift. Lighter toes, go back, shift, more shift, go back, shift, go back, last one time, shift and hold it for 10 seconds, keep pressing the fingers down, they're offering a break, toes are light, look forward, and then go back down. Now these three would be the usual warm up which I suggest to you before getting into the crow. Now the dynamic of a crow pose is when you are setting the knees up on top of the tricep, the higher up it goes to the armpit, the harder it is because that also requires the flexibility of the back line to reach high. However, when it's lower, the flexibility required would be slightly lesser because then the thighs and the chest are away from each other. That's part one. Part two is the gazing point. I see a lot of students looking down as they're doing the practice, which is not incorrect. But then as you want to take the energy forward for the shift, moving the weight from the heel of the palm towards the fingers, looking down doesn't really help because your energy is guided through the direction of your gaze. When it goes downward, you're actually sinking down so I suggest look diagonally forward. That is where you want to shift eventually. Always keep the fingertips active. So that would mean shoulder with distance hands, knees I prefer to keep at the center of the tricep, index finger facing front, I look forward, I shift, I lift one leg up, I feel the other toes getting lighter and maybe coming up, maybe not coming up, because many of us, when we tend to shift, we don't feel the confidence and this is what happens. Maybe during your learning process, you have felt the same thing. It is because they have shifted so much front that they do not know how to apply the brakes with the fingers and then they end up hopping with the hand, which can, if the landing isn't really that uh, light or balanced, can cause potential issues or injuries to the wrist. So being careful here is important. And having said so, now the next part is to learn how to create the breaks, how to use these forearm muscles in order to engage the fingers to press down the mat and create a resistance so that even if the shift is a bit too much forward than what is required, you know how to control. So I recommend students to use a block Maybe you can use two blocks. Uh, one block usually is fine. You can try with one. If it feels like, oh, that's still a bit too far for me, you can use two. So I keep a block, flat edge. I set my hand like I want to do a tripod headstand. So this is my one point, and these two are equilateral triangle. So it's around half a feet forward. So do not keep it too close. Half a feet is a good uh, space to be in. I set my knees on top of my tricep. I shift my body weight front. I lift one leg up. And as I lift my other leg up, I lower down. I rest my forehead on the block. And I simply walk my toes down. Check again. It might be, wow, it's still so far for me. And it's, it's a big fall for me. If that's the condition, set up two blocks and that's perfectly fine. Initially, if the fall is heavy, like the head is banging down pretty hard, place a towel, a thick towel is going to absorb the shock of the head dropping down. So it's much more comfortable for the neck. So these are some precautions which you can do. So first, again, I shift forward. I lift one leg up. I continue shifting. I keep pressing the palm. And as I lift my second leg up, I want to hold one second and go down. Over time, I want to increase the holding time. I want to slow down the dropping pace. 
slow down the dropping. So I shift. Maybe this time I try holding one, two, and I slow down the drop. When I'm slowing down, I have to use the control of my fingers a lot more powerfully in order to create that resistance which helps me to stay up in the air for a longer time. I suggest moving this block off only once you're able to hold at least five seconds. Maybe you can replace this block only with a folded towel. If you're a beginner, let me demonstrate exactly how you would move on from level one to level five. So beginner, up, oops, day one. Once the second toe is off, you're falling down, but again, do not walk. Repeat that. That was a bit slow. This could be your practice for at least one to two day. If you're doing this consistently, there is no reason why you would not slow down. The next stage, I want to hold for two. One, two, you go down. If you can hold longer, that's fine. But here the idea is holding and then going down to build up the control of the fingers. As long as you have got the power on the fingers, you can hold up for much more longer time. And this is mainly related to the fear of the forward shift, which we want to break through. Then, it probably is a three. One, two, three, I slowly go down. And that way, I take it to five. When I'm done with five, if you still have the fear, place a towel. If you're able to do those drills of plank, half push up, shifting front from the ball of the feet, palms heavy, first three warm up as your initial setup, then moving on step by step to do it with the block, tiptoe, one leg up, second leg up, one second down, one leg up, second leg up, two seconds down. And the slower you can get down, the faster you will build up the strength. Your basics should be clear. Your arm strength should be stable. Your ribs should be drawn in to keep the core engaged. Your forward shifts should be felt onto the fingertips. And the gaze should be front with high hips. One last point is, there are many students who ask me, when I do my crow, instead of putting my knees on top of the tricep, if I keep this form, the knees are coming on the side, and the inner thighs which touches the tricep is, it's here instead of here. So instead of here, it is in this form, where my hips are low. It is not incorrect, but it is just the easier method of getting into the form first to build up the stability, confidence, and control. Uh, I would usually not teach this form until somebody really needs it. I would try working with students with the original form first. And usually 99% there is a success rate if they are following this method. If it still doesn't work, probably I might want to give this as an option, letting the student know that eventually they want to get into the actual form. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful. Um, these all tutorials I'm putting on online are being my experiences working with individual student, individual body types for many, many years. And uh, through all these tutorials, I hope that you are receiving benefits. Also, if you have got questions, state it down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Namaste.